Hey guys, it's Katie again with another creepy pasta for you all. The title of this one is Don't Wake Up. Um, so let's begin. I wake up feeling a small pain in my upper back. It's tiny, but it's noticeable. I know what to expect now. It's going to be yet another scratch that seemingly came out of nowhere. My logical mind tells me that it was only me scratching my own back while I was asleep. I believe my mind, but I still have an eerie feeling about all these unexplained scratches. I get up, walk over to my bathroom, hop onto the counter, and pull up my shirt to assess the scratch. As I'd expected, it was long, thin, and relatively deep. It's just like all the other ones I've gotten. As always, once I saw the scratch, I heard the soft, scratchy voice that whispered in every dream I'd had for a year. Every night, without fail, I'd hear a voice hiss in my ear, don't wake up. When this first started happening, it had really freaked me out, but by now I'm used to it. I wake up every morning and live my life like a normal teenager does. Wake up, go to school, come home, do homework, go online, eat, sleep, repeat. Now in the summer, there's even less to do. Wake up at noon, get online, eat, sleep, repeat. Being alone in my room used to be relaxing, but now I can't even stand to be in there to watch television. I have to leave and go into my living room. My room has begun to have a, a dark feeling to it. I haven't told anyone because they'd probably tell me I'm just imagining it or being overdramatic. I walk out of my bathroom and instantly leave my room as fast as possible. Even in the daytime, it creeps me out to be in there. I had tried to sleep in other places when the eerie feeling had first started happening, but I could never sleep in those other places and was always drawn back to the comfort of my own bed. I always fell asleep without any problems at all, which was pretty strange since I couldn't even eat a small meal in there. I trekked my way to the kitchen, not bothering to put on people clothes. My Deadpool t-shirt and night shorts were good enough. I mean, who am I trying to impress anyways? I get cereal, watch TV, and other exciting things for the day. Eventually, I end up back in my room again. It's getting dark, and the only light in my room is the light shining from my computer screen. I go from being wide awake on Tumblr to drowsy and falling asleep sitting up in 10 seconds flat, which isn't really that strange to me anymore. It's been like this since I started having those dreams. I decide to go to bed. I shut my computer down and crawl under my covers, laying there, staring at the darkness, pondering about the voice for a small amount of time. I guess I never did wake up when it told me not to. I can slightly remember darkness for a long while after the voice spoke. I always woke up in the morning and never at night, so I guess that was just my body's way of telling me to sleep through the whole night. As I let my mind wander, the empty feeling of being awake starts to fade as I fall asleep. As soon as I fall asleep, I wake up in another world. It's my dream world. I look around in my own room, standing next to my own bed. My room is lit up by an unknown source of light, as usual. Sure enough, the first words I hear whispered in my ear are, don't wake up. I look around to try to see the source of the voice to no avail. I can never see who it is, which really does frustrate me. Whenever I come into the dream world, I remember every other dream. They're all the same. I wake up in my room, hear the voice, ignore it. Everything goes dark. I start to hear tapping noises and then I wake up in the morning. So I sit down on my bed, eager to get this over with, waiting for the darkness to come, which of course it did. The room grows dark and my dream self crawls back under the blankets, waiting for the tapping to begin. I wait for a while, but it doesn't seem to come. That's really strange, my dream self thinks. It's usually here by now. Once I finish thinking that, as if absolutely on cue, the room begins to slowly lighten, which isn't normal for my dream. This dream is not like the others. Once the room lightens up dully, I can make out a dark figure in the middle of my room. I stare at it for a minute, expecting terror or dread to fill me, but I feel a calmness instead. I wait the room to light up fully so that I can see the owner of the raspy whisper that has been haunting me for so long. The room finally lights up and what I see surprises me. It's a teenage girl. She looks to be about 16 years old, with long, flowing white hair. She stares at me with beautifully wide, red eyes. 
her pale skin reflecting the white light shining from an unknown place in my room. She shifts her dainty feet just an inch across the smooth wooden floor, causing her pure white dress to move only slightly. I feel my lips twitch upward into a smile as I begin to walk towards her. She looks friendly. Maybe she just wants to talk and maybe she just needs a friend. I realize that I'm drawn to her. As I move forward, that sense of dread I've been waiting for begins to fill me. I feel a fear. The closer I get, the less willing I feel to be nearby her. But my feet just keep moving anyways. I realize that I'm not in control of my body at all. I begin to reach out to her, stopping only about six feet away to stare into her beautiful crimson eyes. Her beautiful smile causes me to melt and relax. My other emo emotions start to fade away. The fear and the dread start to release. The longer I stare, the more beautiful she becomes in my eyes. As I feel my eyes glaze over from staring at her without blinking, I begin to notice her lips start to curl down into a terrible grimace. I begin to feel confused, unsure as to why this beautiful girl is frowning. As I stare, her grimace just only, only gets worse, almost as if her face is melting. After about another 30 seconds, I notice with terror, it is. The skin on her face is beginning to slowly melt. The first splatter of her pale flesh, flesh lands on the floor in front of her, followed by more splats of blood, veins, and muscle. She melts, her beautiful dress falling to the floor, her stunning white hair falling out in clumps as blood begins to pool around her. The end result was nothing I could have imagined. It was horrifying. Covered in pulsing veins, a human skeleton attached to a twisted looking inside out neck. Its skeletal teeth are stuck in a permanent frown and its back was bent into a hunch. The only thing that I could see from what I had imagined was the long, sharp black fingernails, which began to grow out from inhuman skeletal fingers attached to an abnormally long, almost spider-like arm. Its elbow twisted the wrong way in a painful direction. It began to grow larger and then start to move. I began to back away, feeling unsafe in my own mind, in my own dream. Just as I back up, I heard the soft, raspy, don't wake up. I've been watching the creature's mouth. It didn't come from the creature. I want to look around, but I can't bring myself to turn my head or let my eyes stray from that terrifying sight in front of me. It begins to slowly move closer as my back hits the wall, walking with a large gait quickly towards me. As long spider-like appendages making cracking and snapping noises with each, with each step. I gasp, frozen in place as it crawls closer opening its jaw to an inhuman length. Its jaw makes a loud cracking noise and the wooden floor begins to creak under its feet, only adding to my terror. It stops right in front of me, staring into my soul with its pure red eye sockets, no eyes. It pauses, then moves a little closer. I squeeze my eyes shut, bracing myself for excruciating pain and loud cracking noises, but everything goes quiet. I can only hear the sound of my racing heart and heavy breathing. I sit there in the silence for a long while before slowly letting my eyes open. I'm surrounded by a choking darkness, deafened by the silence. As I begin to let out a sigh of relief, the voice comes louder than ever before, screeching in my ears, don't wake up. I bolt upright in my bed, letting out a startled scream before muffling myself, not wanting to wake anyone else in the, not wanting to wake anyone else up. I look around, but no, I'm not able to see anything. My room is completely pitch black. I close my eyes for a moment, sighing with relief once again. I'm so glad to be awake, away from whatever had scared me so badly. That voice couldn't have been good all this time. It was telling me not to wake up and leave that horrifying dream. But somehow the dream is actually beginning to fade from my mind. As the seconds pass, I can hardly remember what the dream was even about. All of a sudden, I hear my closet creak. It creeps me out a bit and it prompts me to stand up and run over to my light switch. I flick it on and, is and I'm horrified by what I see. In that moment, I begin to wish I'd actually listened to the raspy voice in my dreams. I wish I hadn't woken up. On my wall, written in fresh, dripping blood, read, you woke up. The thing comes out of the closet and it starts to walk towards me. Okay.
So that was it. Um, thank you so much. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, if you did, please like and subscribe to my channel. And um, I'll see you guys later. Bye. Thank you.